This is a little nightlight I use in my bedroom and it just sits in a corner and it, it's not got a switch, it just stays lit 24-7. And let me just turn the lights off so you can see that at night time it actually looks quite bright. And although it's not putting out a lot of light, it is enough that in a very dark room the room will be lit quite well you can see everything in the room. It, it, it's a very good source of light in the room. And this runs um, on just two AA nickel metal hydride cells. And as you may have already guessed in the shape, it was adapted from a solar post light. And inside, that's just a stainless steel tube. Inside this, if I just prise this out, is a little circuit board with a um, straw hat LED standing proud of it. That's the name the Chinese suppliers give to this flat top LED. I say flat top, it's a curved top and that's why they seem to call it the straw hat LED. And the circuit board in this is basically, it's got a little surface mount resistor underneath uh, with a value of 56 ohms and the LED and I just left the resistor in place. And there's nothing else, it's just two cells, the LED and the little resistor that's in series the LED. Now if you consider that a white LED has a typical forward voltage of approximately, um, at the lowest current, around about 2.5 volts, um, and that gradually, the more current passes through it, the voltage, the forward voltage tends to rise. They've got quite a wide range of about half a volt uh, between the lowest current and the full sort of 20 milliamps. But, um, the forward voltage is still very close to the um, nickel metal hydride cells. They, they, when you, they're, they're fully charged, you're looking at roughly 1.5 volts per cell. But that fairly quickly drops down to a st steady voltage of approximately 1.2. So technically speaking, this pack's only putting out about 2.4 volts for the full run. And it kind of balances round about the forward voltage of this LED and it settles out and it just sits there. And the typical quiescent current is, I'm not 100% sure, let's see what the quiescent current across this is at the moment. I think it's probably going to be the region, these, these are fresh batteries I've just put in at the moment. That's what inspired me to start taking this to bits and see what resistor was in it. Because I'd forgotten, so I'm just going to measure that right now. So the voltage I've got coming up from the battery pack is... ...2.8 volts. And the voltage across the resistor... ...is very low. It's actually, it's uh, 0.134. So if you consider 0.134, I equals V over R... ...0.134 divided by the 56 ohm resistor, the current that's going through it is 2 milliamps at the moment and progressively that will drop down to about 1 milliamp. And if you consider that these are 2500 milliamp hour um, cells, then on a full charge, 2500 milliamp hours that means that if you're just drawing 1 milliamp from these cells they're technically speaking going to last for 2,500 hours. And if you then divide that by 24, that means it's going to run for 104 days, divided by 30 for the days of the month, and it shows that it will run for three months. Um, and that's not allowing for the slight self-discharge of these cells. You get the cells of a slightly lower capacity that um, have much lower self-discharge, but modern nickel metal hydride cells are very good that way. They, they don't have a huge, uh, hugely high self-discharge. But in short, I don't need to change the batteries in this very often. Typically once every three months. And, you know, it's really surprising. It, it makes it, at night time, you think one milliamp, that's not going to be very bright, but in a pitch black room, the one milliamp does light the whole room to the point that you can clearly see everything in the room. So it's um, all very impressive. Uh, ideal as a nightlight uh, for um, just general comfort use.